Welcome to Cooking Italian Style. Today, Chef Julie and Chef Cassio will be making risotto milanese. Welcome to Cooking Italian Style. Today, Chef Julie and Chef Cassio will be making risotto milanese. Bueno appetito. So what we're doing, uh, let's see, this is, Julie's gonna talk too about like, how she does her class project-wise. And then, you know, so we're gonna be making the risotto milanese. And as I go along, if, you know, like questions like why we're doing this kind of rice or that, and I'll try and, you know, tell things. And it's fairly easy, too. What we wanted to do today are things that are really good, but don't take a whole lot of work. It's not like, oh, my God, you know, you can go home after school and do this easily, and it doesn't take that much. So it's uh, risotto, and you have the recipes there, and uh, so we're just going to start. So the first thing we're going to do in the pan, this pot here, we're going to put olive oil and butter, as you can see. And it has measurements, but I just look. I kind of got the idea. <laughs> I need my own measurements. And Julie's going to start chopping. We use portobello mushrooms, just a regular onion. And then I'll get the pancetta in a minute and talk about that. How small do you want to Just little cubes. Okay. Can I ask a question? You can ask any question. Just fire away. You know, like, look on the bottom side. You see all those gills, those vegetables? Yeah. Now, some, sometimes I, I've cooked with them before, and they've just been so pronounced that I think, and they make everything black. They do. They will but impart they, a color. Now, actually, I've even kind of, like, scraped them out because I just wanted the cap and not the gills. You know what you can do? You know what you can do also? You can, um, and it's about the same flavor, is get the porcini mushrooms. The little, they look like little portobellas, but they're almost like a white cap mushroom, but without the gills underneath. So you can do that, and then we'll give that a cut. We use that too, I, either way. So we take, we're doubling the recipe for the five of you, six of you. <laughs> So, uh, like I say, you can eat, and uh, so we just take an onion, portobello mushrooms, and I'll get the pancetta, and we're going to brown that in the butter and olive oil. Yes, but it can on school campus. It is. It is. Man, you can't. Oh, I do actually have wine I'm putting in here, but I just brought enough because didn't want to get in trouble. No, I'm going to do the whole one. I just did half at a time. It's easier. Depends. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to see that because sometimes it just depends on the onion. It really does. Sometimes it is. Sometimes just can't even see. Now, I don't know what causes it. Why some and not others? <laughs> when you retire, that's when I'll cry. So it'd be more with, there's no red sauce, even though that doesn't always hold true, because everybody says north is cream sauce, south is red sauce. 
we we didn't see that much cream sauce when we went into Italy in the north, and actually the relatives who we visited did red sauce. It's light though; it's not real heavy. Like today, we're doing a a bolognese sauce, which is a meat sauce in red, and it'll be a lot heavier than the sauce. So even when they did a meat sauce, it's very little meat. Even I remember my mom did it more that way. She was from northern Italy, and they don't use as much meat as as some areas do, especially farther north. Okay, you can put that in. Gary, where where would you recommend purchasing the um, mushrooms? Any store. Yeah. They're anywhere. Safeway, Bel Air, Save Mart, Portobello's are just in the, they're all the same. It's heating up right now. It's, it's on. So I had the pan on. That's why it's just intimate little group. I would have too, but what they're missing. Wow. I can't understand why there's not too many white people in there. I know. Whatever. Okay. Only the better people showed up. <laughs> okay, the next thing I'm doing here is I'm using pancetta, which is Italian bacon. And the only difference between, you could use regular bacon, the only difference is pancetta isn't as smoky. Doesn't have that smoke flavor, so it's still the pork, the cured pork. Bacon flavor somewhat, but it's a lot milder. It doesn't give that smoky, but you could use regular. It comes like it looks like a lunch meat or something. Salon. When you go to buy pancetta, it, so it's it's rolled. So when it comes out, it's like a strip of bacon, but it's around. And I usually get it because I use it a lot especially now this time of year in soups which we'll use later and that just adds a good flavor you don't put a ton in but um i usually have them slice it about nickel thick i don't because if you buy it already sliced in the packages it's good but it's real thin and it's hard to cut up and what i do is i just take each piece once i buy a pound at a time and i take each piece and i wrap it up like this and i put it in little and i put it in my freezer and then i can just pull these out and even if you have it fresh, what you want to do before, throw it in the freezer for a little bit because it's way easier to chop. It'd be like chopping regular bacon when it's thawed out and it's all mushy. Yeah. This is easy. You freeze it a little bit or just frozen and then it chops up real good. It's not sliding all over the place. Yeah? Well, I, I don't buy the whole thing. I go to Cordy's. Usually Cordy's and I'll say, give me a pound, and they slice it for me about nickel thick. Because I like it a little thicker. It's either it's a little chunkier in here. Thought it was what? Ham. Now it's pork, kind of. It's on the same line. Close enough. But it is, it, yeah, it's Italian bacon. Uh, Italian importing company? On 19th and J? Yes. Yeah, I know the guys pretty well that own it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. What it's not smoked. So it's pretty much like our bacon, but it doesn't have, it's not smoked as much. It's a milder flavor. That's, that's really the only difference. Is it, from Italian? <laughs> it might be. I don't know if this is important. I don't know if it's imported or not. I'm not sure. I don't remember if it was. But it might be. So how many calories do you know that it's wasted right now? I have no idea. I don't worry about it. You know what my doctor says? Everything in moderation. So you just don't have to eat a ton of it, but I'm not going to not eat it because I go, it has too many calories, are you? Oh, no, I'm going to taste yours. No, it's too many calories. You can't. Yeah, I heard that on TV. I didn't know it did. It used to be hard. I'd be. No, we're sautéing it in, in butter and uh, actually, we're, give her a recipe. Here's the recipe. There you go. Yeah. So good. Butter and and olive oil. 
Yeah, I chunked the butter when after I put the olive oil, I chunked a piece of the butter and put it in there and come to my house, you can see it all the time. Well, we're neighbors practically. So now we just wait a little bit. I have chicken stock here that I already heated up. Because you want hot because I'm going to add it. As you can see there, you add it slowly. You absorbs into the rice and you add more and you keep doing it. So you want it hot because you just took it like, because this is just out of a can. Just canned chicken stock, low sodium. But if, um, if it was just canned temper, every time you put it in, it would stop cooking. So I try and keep, you get it nice and hot so as you put it in, it'll, it won't stop the cooking process and have to keep warming up. I don't know. I don't know. You know, probably no difference. I was almost going to say probably if you have a real good pot, maybe, you know, because a lot of times when you see on the shows too, they, they're like, oh, make your own. Don't buy it. Make your own. Like, yeah, I guess it's not. You could. Probably is better if you made your own beef stock or chicken stock. Now, something I tried a while back with, you know, because sometimes you use bouillon, and they have, I didn't, it's not in chicken, but I saw it in beef. It's in where the bouillon is. It's in the jar, and it says better than bouillon, and it's actually made of beef base. It's pasty, and it's fine. And then once you open it, you got to put it in the refrigerator, though. But it did, it is really, oh, I got it at Safeway. I mean, it was just, I, I think it's probably in most stores. Most, what we do is, in any store, you know, I mean, nothing, we didn't go to any specialty store. Probably the pancetta is the only thing that, because you don't find that. You'll find it in other stores, but it's in those little shrink wrap packs, and it's real thin. So that's why I just brought some from home and said, because it's easier. And What's that? The only thing it does, I think it dries out sometimes. It gets a little moist. It doesn't go bad. Now that beef stuff I'm talking about is actually made out of beef, I think, because I read it, and you do have to refrigerate that. But regular bouillon, I don't. It'll just get moist sometimes, so it gets hard. You gotta chunk it. Yes. No, there's no garlic in here. Mm -mm. But I mean, this recipe isn't, and in fact, it's interesting, there's a restaurant in San Francisco that does Southern Italian cooking, it's excellent, called A16. A16, it's Southern Italian cooking. It's everything from Rome southward. Different things, and I met, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but I met the owner in that, but I got his book and read something. I did a tripe recipe he has, which some people wouldn't want that, but does very good an Italian tripe and in the recipe he puts garlic and onion but what he writes in there is one of the few recipes where we'll mix garlic and onion really? yeah I guess a lot believe that you don't mix the two wow. well no I know but he's saying Italian and my mother did I do yeah. but I mean I was in the first time I ever saw that written Oh, they are in my house and my relatives and all that, but that's the one time I read that, I go, never, I never heard that. Oh, that's coming good. So. Hey, man, we got to hit every nationality. Okay, next thing. These are pretty brown. The onions are translucent. The pancetta is cooked. The flavors are mixed. I'm going to add the rice. And this is our Boreo rice. And somebody asked, what's the difference? Is there a difference? There is. This is an Italian rice. And the difference being, I mean, is that it gets creamy. And it's kind of round. It's rounder. It's a little, yeah, it's a little round. It's not little... It's not See how it looks a little different? Okay. You probably know. Yeah. 
So it's a little different looking. It's a little rounder, but what it does, the thing I've read is it gets creamy as you cook it slow. Does it cook quicker? No. Just as long, or I longer. The longer and slower you cook it, the creamier it gets. Okay. So I put this in and let it cook, just mix it in so it kind of takes the flavor of what we cooked it in for a few minutes, or for about maybe a minute at the most. Um, they come in boxes. She, uh, it'll sometimes come in a pack. In fact, probably where if you're going to use it, where I'm going to get it next, I didn't realize till the other day. I went over to buy some polenta, and I noticed the Sacramento Natural Food Co-op. They have it in bulk. Arborio rice. So I'll go there and get it from now on. I probably would. So when you put it in, when you keep adding it, it doesn't stop the cooking. It keep, it's hot, so it just keeps cooking. If not, it would stop it and then have to get back up to heat. So what I'm going to do now, now we're just going to just, probably for the next half hour, is just, I'm going to put probably a few cups to start. Maybe one more because we're doubling it. No. What you want to do, you put it in and you let it cook. I'm going to turn it up a little bit to get, and then you let it cook and, and the liquid starts getting absorbed into the rice. And as it dries out, you put more. And then for some reason, if you put it all, it doesn't absorb well. It just floods it. So you just put it in, it'll start boiling, and it'll start absorbing in the rice, get thick. Then you add another one or two. Not yet. I'll do that at the end. I'll taste it and see because you still will get salt from the pancetta and maybe from, I don't know if we got salt free chicken stock, but you know, sometimes from that. So I don't want to put it in the start because then it's like, ah, it's too salty. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, just store and kind of watch and make sure because what will happen too, some of the liquid will stay on top. So you think, oh, there's still liquid, but underneath it's absorbing, it's kind of dry. Mm -hmm. So then that's why you're kind of keeping to see that it's... No. Because we're going to just keep... Right, but I mean, even if, if I didn't use our... I mean, you can make this without using arboreal rice. I just like it better. It calls for it, but... I would do the same thing. I wouldn't cover it, even if I use a regular short grain or medium grain rice or for this dish. For this dish. For this dish. Oh, other dishes. I know what you're saying. Yeah, you cover it. Where did you get the dish? Mussolini. I'm Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. We've cooked it for a long time. I think we got it from a friend. Actually, we. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, not this a lot. I cook a lot at home. My mother. And I really didn't cook a lot. That's where I learned a lot from, but I learned not knowing I was learning. I didn't go in and go, Mom, I'm learning how to cook. Because just when I was my mom, we never went out to dinner. My mom cooked. Italian mom, Italian dad. Mom cooked dinner every night. I mean, it was, well, it just, we just didn't, you know, full dinner. And especially when it was like probably winter, bad weather, you know, this time of year, bad and young and waiting. My dad was a truck driver, we got home later. So my mom's cooking. I'd sit in the kitchen and talk to my mom. Just not, and watching her cook without, you know, things. And then when I got married the first time, my wife, well, she didn't cook that much Italian. She wasn't Italian and didn't know so then I kind of took over doing that and I remembered a lot and my mom was still alive then and then I call her too go okay now when you were doing this maybe but what else oh okay but it was surprising how much I learned just not knowing I was learning just by did she measure? no 
Not too much. Not, no, you know what I mean. Maybe, no, maybe, you know, you pound, you know, so much meat, so you buy a pound of meat and you knew you put a pound in, but. Yeah, I mean, it call, I put measurements, so you kind of know, but I now I just, I don't, you know, some things I do measure, you know, depending what it is, but others just, you know, I'll add extra sometimes because it tastes better. About time I retain something. <laughs> no, I know. And not even knowing it. Right. And at one of the quotes that one of the students wrote on one of the cards is, a teacher is a role model. And that's exactly what his mom was, is a perfect role model. I haven't made, I've made rice pudding one time from scratch, so I'm not like an ex, I don't know, but yeah. is it? You know, because it gets so creamy and thick, you know. I mean, oh, I bet that'd be good. Oh, okay, everybody remember that. If you make rice pudding, use our board, I, I bet it would. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now we're just kind of waiting. It's going to cook down. We'll keep adding, cook down. It'll get creamier. Now, I was just thinking, there's another risotto recipe. It's real easy. My mom used to make, my mom didn't make this kind, but... Another one, what she would do is take, put olive oil in the pan, warm it up, throw the rice, when it gets hot, throw rice in, so I'd say a cup, cup and a half of rice, and just kind of saute it for a second, just, I don't know why, she just said, oh yeah, you do that so the oil coats the rice. And then all she'd do is she'd put a container, you know, just, I don't know, but you know, back in those days, it was like the old butter container you didn't have measured out, you know, of her sauce, red sauce, and chicken broth. So it covers the rice about that much, and some mushrooms. Stir it up, put the top on, and let it go for about 20, 25 minutes. But you have to stir it every now and then. But you do keep the top on that one, and then every now and then take it and stir it because it'll stick the bottom, and let it go. And then at the end. Throw some butter and Parmesan cheese in it. Oh. But I mean, it's real easy risotto. Just if you have some sauce, some red sauce, whether it be meat or meatless, it doesn't matter. It could be canned. If that's what you, or jar of Paul Newman's. But you probably wouldn't put a whole big jar. It'd be too much, maybe half. And, and like I say, and just do it that way. And then let it cook slow. You don't want it boiling real, but once you get it going, it's kind of simmering. And stir it. And like I say, just with... The sauce and chicken broth, let it cover the rice by, and then it'll cook down and absorb. And every now and then stir it though, because it'll stick to the bottom, because that. The so when you're cooking with olive oil, there's a certain temperature you have to, you have to keep the temperature down when you're cooking with olive oil. Well, I understand. So you can't overheat like a scalding heat. Basically, what I learned is really there's not many things you cook at a high temperature. You might heat something up, but probably some, one of the biggest mistakes I've heard is that people try, in fact, that's what my kids used to do, my two boys. And that's a tendency probably I did when I was young. You know, tends to like, well, just turn the heat up and let's cook it. It's probably nothing you really want on high heat unless you're boiling a pot of water or getting something going. But usually most recipes say medium, medium high and then turn it down. Because you never want anything really high because that's... Yeah. I don't know. It just cooks it too fast and it burns it. It doesn't get, it, you need a little bit low. Not like low heat, but I think real high just cooks the outside and doesn't cook the inside. The off gasoline from olive oil when you overheat it, it's not good or something like that. I don't know.
just medium, just so it doesn't burn, especially with garlic. Because when, you, especially if you mince garlic up and it's real hot, it just burns it and then it kind of gets a bitter flavor. You really got to watch that. That's true. So you just want to medium and stir it good and so it cooks it without burning it. You get flies in your kitchen, you kill them. You do whatever you want. Do a drawing. So, whichever it is. So, we have some drawings here. We have. We'll do three right now. Okay. And so the very first one is a passionate teacher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the next one is a brilliant teacher. <laughs> and the last one is the dazzling teacher. Dazzling, are you here? Dazzling? Are you in the house? Oh, by the way, I'm dazzling. Paella? I don't know. I've never made paella, so I don't know. Okay, I'll clean you, it up. Good for you. I don't know. I've never made it. I don't know if I've even had it. Yeah. I should have told Gary and had him give suggestions. A what? Vino, vino, vino. Vino, yeah, I wish we could, but you can't bring it on campus. I don't know if you're even supposed to have it, are you? I have a rice cooker at home, uh, and it's plastic, and I can use it in a microwave, and it cooks rice in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if that will work, your recipe will work in a microwave. I have no idea. I don't. I'm just guessing. It wouldn't came out come out the same because you have all the liquid. On. You're not cooking it slow enough to let it absorb and then stop and let it absorb. It's just all at once. Because I've made this before when I was kind of in a hurry and I just put the liquid in real quick and it was fine, but it wasn't as creamy. Oh, thank you. No, we're doing three different things. It's funny, so many people said they were coming to all three sessions, so we thought we were going to have a lot of people, but... Yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is nice. So you just kind of know by eyeing it when to yeah. add a little more. As it absorbs, you add a little more. Mm -hmm. I always thought risotto had a little bit of cream in it. Some do or no? You know, there's so many recipes. Uh, it, yeah, you could, God, there's just books on risotto, this risotto, that, so.
a red wine, and then also sherry, and sherry actually is sweeter. Oh yeah, sherry, I wouldn't, I'd be careful if I put that in, depending what your recipe is, because that's gonna give a sweet, I wouldn't put it like in a red sauce or, or that, because it would really be pretty sweet. But there's certain things that you want it, I mean, it's called for, or you know, even sometimes sweet vermouth, you like putting in too. What I do now, what I brought this white wine here that we'll put in the risotto towards the end, what I buy now because it, you know, and I'll sip some of it while I'm cooking too, not at school, but uh, <laughs> I buy the two buck Chuck, Charles Shaw now, because it's pretty good wine for $1.99 to cook with, because really the better, I mean, I wouldn't use a real expensive wine to cook. Some people say do it because the better the wine, the better the flavor, the better, but Charles Shaw's, I mean, they're red or they're white, is really good. I go, for $1.99, I use it for cooking. And like I say, right. if I happen to get thirsty while I'm cooking and that's there, I'll take a little of that because it's not bad. Charles Shaw, two buck Chuck at Trader Joe's. S-H-A-W. Now. The white. That at some at the state fair, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was the. Uh, it was a white wine. Okay, speaking of wine, do you like red wine? Okay, we heard about it. Well, we have friends from Chicago. They know more about Napa Valley than we do because they'll call if they're coming out again. But anyway, and they have a home in Tucson. So a few weeks ago, they were in their Tucson home. They called us up, and she's always good at finding the wine finds. She goes, "Okay, I got another one." Tuscan Moon Sangiovese, Trader Joe's, four ninety nine. Really pretty good. Tuscan Moon Sangiovese. For anybody, it's not bad, especially after open it and let's sit about ten minutes in that. Man, for four ninety nine, it is really good. Also well, yeah. with no, well red with no sulfites. If you have, it's organic, but it's. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's her latest find, Gail's latest find, and we bought it, I mean, for four ninety nine or whatever, and actually it was funny, because we had a neighbor come over, it was like Halloween, and, and she came over with an empty wine glass next to our neighbor and said, trick or treat, and we had them, we didn't say anything, we just poured it, and she was drinking, and a minute later she goes, gosh, this is really good, what is this? I go, oh, it's our finest very wine, very expensive, don't drink too much. Now the thing that I noticed, it surprised me, because usually I always cook pretty much with red wine, but when we were in Italy, even when, when uh, Loretta's aunt was making a red sauce and her recipe for that, she put white wine in. Not red, I, I've always just kind of been thought, especially for tomato sauce, you know, even though we're gonna use red today for that meat sauce, but even on hers, because we got a recipe and it's white wine kind of surprised me. Hey, you look hungry over there. <laughs> we have talked about how this helps a student in the classroom to observe. Well, if I eliminate my computers, are you going to let me teach, being a role model. teach with her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll talk about that. The gal from AR was like, well, I know, but you know how they are talking? You don't have to film. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Yes. Well, it's not always us, and you know that. Teachers always say, oh, it's Vernick's class. Not true. Not true. It is a lot of it. Hi. Yeah, really, there's hardly anybody in here. We're going to let you guys come and take a look. Well, you know, there's only so much, so much the budget will allow. Okay, I was going to see how thick it was while you were doing this. So what are you using as your judge of when to put in more of liquid? Just, no, no, there's liquid on top, but when you go to turn on the bottom and it's pretty dry, then you put more and stir it, because what will happen, it will get that liquid on the top like that. And you'll go and you'll go, oh, there's still plenty. And you'll go to turn it over, and underneath it's pretty dry. There it's starting to stick. I say about the mean, like, the, the, uh, it gets fat, so the, the other. 
Yeah, yeah. I, see, I don't know what about, I mean, but that's, and again, like, that's what I read about. But if you're going to buy some, where do you live? As you say, I don't know, maybe somewhere. I know it's a lot cheaper at the co-op. You know, we're by my house downtown, bulk. Because it's those little bags like that, sometimes they'll be $5 in the store. That's really expensive. But now that I saw it in the co-op, I'll go, I'll just buy it in a big bag, you know, and just keep it in the fridge. Both in, and you get a mix. It's a rose. <laughs> anyway, oh, this is great. See, see. Now when I stir, I mean it's still wet, but right. it's not as wet as you would think by looking at the top. No, a, minute, a second ago, it looked like it had a lot of liquid. This got to be hard cooking in the too. Well, and I hate electricity. Yeah, I mean I wouldn't. But you take what you have. Is it better than sitting in poetry for now, the classroom? Do Why do you think we did it? I go, if I got to be here. Well, actually, Julie came up with it last year when we were in the music class, remember? Did you ever do the music one last yes. Easter? Yes. We were there and go, and it was fun. It was and nice. You it was. Know, you know what, what uh, Jonah and I were talking about this morning? What? Because you guys are inspired us. And we thought, well, then we ought to just offer, because if you can teach it by the outcomes, they can learn them, then... Next time we'll do like a, a, a score dance, score dance for the faculty. We could teach. You could. Once we taught you 12 moves, we could probably do. Yeah, pretty. Why are you doing? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just. Oh, all right. Hey, something. <laughs> So what are you around having for dinner tonight? You having risotto or minestrone? I don't know. Because you're gonna have plenty. I'm excited to make this, so to start making it's risotto. Easy. Oh, that other one I told. Did you listen? That my mom no. used to make. What did it have in it? Okay. Her risotto was just her. Her little. She didn't make it like this. She'd take, you know, the pan, put olive oil in it, throw her rice in, maybe. Cup, cup and a half, you know, maybe, you know, I'm trying to think as a kid, coat it a little bit, you know, not much for yeah, 30, 40 yeah. seconds, cook it, then put a container of her homemade sauce, red sauce, mushrooms, a little bit of mushroom, and then chicken broth, to cover it about that much over the rice, you know, with all that, stir it, and then simmer it. And now you do have to go back, put the top on, and simmer it for 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30, you know, just depending. But you gotta stir it every now and then because the liquid goes to the top and then it'll get, you just keep doing it, cook, cook down, it gets, and then at the end put some butter in it and then put a bunch of cheese and toss it. It's like, really? Easy, and it's so good. Red uh, risotto. Actually, my kids, I think, like that better. Isn't it? I mean, I don't know when in the Italian restaurants they serve risotto just as a main course and nothing with it. I always want something with it. Yeah. Now, when we make this, this is always a dish we make a lot of uh, not always, but a lot of times. When we make this, a lot of times we'll make this in with our homemade sausage. See, yeah, in a salad or a vegetable. White wine. That absorbs, then we'll put butter and the Parmesan in and bon appetit, baby. Oh yeah. Good girl.
No. And when was this supposed to be? I think you need to stick to what you know. You know filming. You I don't. Get, I didn't get a film you staring at. Oh, here we go. <laughs> now you got me, huh? Thank you. <laughs> okay. We're almost done here. Yay. Class. <laughs> Are we ready? Okay, next. Put in white wine. It's pretty creamy. Now we'll put the white wine in, give it a couple minutes to that cook in a little bit, and then we'll just throw some butter and cheese in and you can eat. Is your, is your heat still on? Or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because you want to cook in and even absorb the wine. Did you write two butt chuck on here? Did I write what? Two butt chuck? No, I just put white wine. That's why I told you. I'd get a, what I would do, the one I put, I'd go out and get, I don't know, maybe a Rombar or Chardonnay to use, or a, what's the other one? You know, something's about 40, 50 bucks a bottle. I'd say, go get Rombar, Chardonnay, or uh, if we, if cake we, bread. If we have you over for dinner, that's what we get. To cook with or to drink? <laughs> I say, no, I'm saying cook with Rombar or cake bread or... Isn't it easy to like kill a bottle of wine while you're cooking? <laughs> then you then you go to sit. My wife will go there, I'll open one, I'll be cooking, drinking, we'll go to the table, sit down, pour a glass, and then a little more for me. And she's like, where'd it go? I go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where it went. Or she won't notice because I'll pour her glass, it'll be there, and I'll pour a little more, and then a little bit later I'll be like done. She goes, We drank all that? I go, Yeah. We did. Huh? Mm -hmm. Especially my oldest. His wife's a vegetarian, so. Oh, wow. Pardon me? Hard. Well, we just get to the point, like, okay, what's Leah going to eat? Because we're not going to change our way, so we try and get something, well, we got Leah can have this or that, or, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Actually. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. next, throw in some more butter. Cheese. I didn't mention. I'll go and cook with Giada. Giada, cooking Italian. Oh, is that No, Giada de Laurentiis. Real pretty, girl. Real pretty gorgeous. In fact, the hint. Um, aside, aside from the way she looks, if you want a good Italian cookbook, or uh, if you watch the Food Channel, you ever watch Giada de Laurentiis? The young gal, she was born in Rome. Actually, she's the great granddaughter of Dino de Laurentiis, the film person. She's the only one in the family that went cooking. <laughs> Pretty good to look at. But aside from that, she has really good recipes. They're authentic Italian, and they're easy. That's her philosophy, like a lot of chefs. Is her thing is, I don't want to make them difficult, because if I do, people won't cook. I want to encourage people. and. I have a couple of her books, and everything we've done is really good. In fact, the minestrone I'm doing this afternoon is hers, and it's probably and it, but it's simple, but it's authentic. Like I said, she was born in Rome, she trained over there, did that, but lives here. But those are really good cookbook. Her name's Giada De Laurentiis, G I A D A.
Then who? Huh? Well, I like Michelangelo's. I like Spataro's. I like Michelangelo's. I don't know. I'm trying to think where we go out Italian-wise. Actually, actually, what's a, uh, is good? Uh, Paisano's isn't bad. Hmm? Oh, Bebas is great, but every it's excellent. Everything's really good, but it's it's hard for us to go because it's and I mean she's really nice. Everything's good, but it's a little too expensive for what you get for me for Italian. Yeah, right across the street on Forty uh, Sixth. You see her walking sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Huh? No. I've, I've eaten there before. I, the, anybody hungry? Sure. We'll serve you. It's not going to be as good as this. I don't know. We don't know, but we heard. I have no idea. just meatier like I said you could use cremini I would use one of those kind they're a little meatier a little heavier but I mean if you use regular white cap mushrooms it'd be fine but I think it gives a little more flavor a little better better texture but you don't have to get portobello like like Diane was saying sometimes you know makes it see how dark it is kind of if, if I use cremini it wouldn't be as dark it would be a lighter whiter color just because of the sure. you got one okay Mm-hmm. 